Grouping sets is a new feature in SQL Server 2008 that allows you to greatly simplify certain queries that require grouping and aggregation. And here's an example of a situation where grouping sets might be useful. Suppose that you wanted to do a distinct count query where you wanted to count the number of distinct products that were sold by period of time and country where the period of time was designated by two different columns, year and quarter. So you wanted distinct counts for year, quarter, and country, and then of course for the periods themselves, and then the countries themselves, and then an overall distinct count. To do that now in SQL Server 2005 or earlier uh, would require that you create basically four different versions of the same query and union the results together, which is really pretty painful. So um, grouping sets makes that a lot easier. Here's an example of a grouping sets query that computes the result that we're looking for. You see down here in the group by clause, we have a grouping sets notation where we specify the distinct sets of columns that we want to group by individually. So this is more flexible than the group by cube and group by rollup notation you may be familiar with. It's um, really a generalization of those two concepts. You can explicitly specify those sets of columns that you want to group by. And the query will actually run more efficiently because it doesn't have to scan the data multiple times. Um, and the optimizer is, is smart enough to figure out that it can compute some grouping results from others. If I execute this query, um, the initial rows that are going to come back are going to be the, the year, quarter, country counts. And then later on we'll see the country counts and then the period counts. And then this indicator, this here where we have null values for all the different grouping columns, that indicates that this is the uh, overall count. You might ask yourself, um, when is it a good idea to use this feature? When is it not a good idea? So those of you who are familiar with uh, reporting tools like um, reporting services and also the, the pivot table capability in Excel uh, may know that it's really easy to create a pivot table in Excel. Um, and the pivot tables in Excel, for example, can compute subtotals for rows and columns in a grand total very, very easily. It's, it's easy to do that. So because of that, um, for purely additive aggregates like sum and count, um, if your reporting tool is a rich tool like the Excel pivot table capability, you really don't need the grouping sets uh, query notation. You can just group by the main you know, the grouping cell. You, know, you can group by all the different columns. So in, in this example, if this was not a count distinct but was just a count, I could group by year, quarter, and country and leave this stuff out. Just have a regular group by query. And then I could take the query result and feed that into Excel, create a pivot table off of it. And inside Excel, I could compute um, period totals and country totals and a grand total. Now, however, there are situations where you can't do that. For example, count distinct is not something that Excel can be able to do. The reporting tool cannot do a count distinct because it doesn't have access to all the data. So. Yeah, you can't compute a count distinct from just a count for the, the finest grain cell. So a, rule, a good rule of thumb is if you're using sums and counts but not distinct and you have a rich reporting tool that can compute pivot tables for you directly and compute the sums and, or counts for the, the rows and columns, then um, you're better off just using regular group by notation and doing the, the uh, subtotals in the reporting tool. However, if you need to create a pivot table of distincts, then use grouping sets. Furthermore, if you're using a somewhat primitive report rendering capability, for example, suppose that you're rendering your reports in raw HTML, then um, it's a good idea to go ahead and use grouping sets and you can in your application program uh, pull out the uh, the different totals and put them in the right place on a on a report in HTML. 
um, because it's not going to be easy for you to compute the subtotals yourself in the application in a, in a, a simple application that's just going to display results and say uh, an HTML table. So that's it, a description of the new grouping sets feature in SQL Server 2008 that can greatly simplify certain types of queries.